Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. In today's video, we're going to start with admin commands, and I'll show you how you can enter a command in a text box and have it do something to a player. The first command that we're going to set up is a kill command, so I can type slash kill and the name of the player, and I'll just type my name for now. And when I enter that command, it'll kill the player. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in and get started. To start, we're going to insert a UI into the game, and you can do that under the Home tab by clicking right here. You're going to click on Screen GUI. Once you insert that Screen GUI, you're going to rename it to Admin. After that, you're going to click on the plus sign next to the Screen GUI, and you're going to insert a frame. Go ahead and drag that frame and resize it to whatever shape you want. Inside that frame, you're going to be adding a text box. Go ahead and take that text box and resize it to whatever shape you want. For the frame, if you want the same color as mine, I went down to Style. And then I changed it from Custom to Drop Shadow. Okay, for the text box, you're going to rename that to Command Box. After that, we're going to insert a text button into the frame. Go ahead and move that to the right of the Command Box. For the text of the button, you can change it to something like Enter. So down under the text section, locate text, and then change it to Enter. Okay, for the name of the text button, you're going to right click, press rename, and then type Enter. A couple things that you might want to do for the command box is down under the text section, select text scaled, and that'll make it a nice size so it fills up the box. Another thing you can do is set the placeholder text, which is like the default text for the text box. So you can do something like enter command. You can also do any other style changes that you want to do, such as changing the background color, or maybe changing the text color. Okay, after you make all the style changes that you want to do for the command box, we're going to be inserting a local script into the frame. And at this point, I'm going to switch over to the script I wrote before, and I'll explain how it works. Okay, so this is the script that you'll need to put inside the local script that's directly inside the frame. Up here at the top, we're starting with a variable for replicated storage. So we just say local RS, which we're using as short for replicated storage. And that's going to be equal to game colon get service. And inside the parentheses, we're going to put replicated storage. Down here, we're going to be creating a variable for a remote event. So before we get too much farther, let's go ahead and add that in. So up here, go ahead and locate replicated storage and click on the plus sign. We're going to be adding a remote event. Once you add the remote event, go ahead and rename it to command event. Okay, so now back to the script, we're going to say local command event is equal to rs, which stands for replicated storage. And then we're going to say colon wait for child. And what we're waiting for is the command event. Okay, down here are a couple variables for our frame. The first one, we're going to say local frame is equal to script.parent. So that's going to make a reference for the frame right here. Then we're going to say local enter is equal to frame.enter. So that's a reference for our enter button. Finally, we're going to say local box is equal to frame dot command box. And you can probably guess by now that's a reference for a command box right here. The next thing we're going to do is write a function that's going to take the text that the user enters into the text box and we're going to split it up. The way we're going to do that, we're going to start by saying local function. The name of our function is going to be get underscore command. And here we're going to start with a variable. We're going to say local command is equal to an empty table. And then right here, this for loop, what it's going to do, it's going to take whatever text the user enters, and it's going to split it up by the spaces. So for example, if I type right here, and I do slash kill, space, and then a name, what it's going to do, it's going to take the first part, which is going to be slash kill, and the other part is going to be the name. So it just splits it up wherever it sees a space. So in the script, the way we're going to do that is we're going to say for word in string dot gmatch. This is the text that we're going to be looking at. So it's our command box and the text that the user entered. Here is how we're going to be splitting it up. So we're going to be splitting it according to the spaces. And what we're going to do for each word that gets separated is we're going to insert that into the command table. Okay, once we do that, we're going to have two items inside of our table. The first one is going to be our action. So in our case, it's going to be slash kill. And the other part is going to be the name of the person. 
Okay, so before we go too much farther, let me just show you how this works. So let's go ahead and print off the value for action. And we'll also print off the value for person. All right, let's go ahead and run the game. And then we'll go ahead and open up the output to see the print messages. So down here, I'm going to say slash kill. And then the name of a person. So we'll just type name. And then when I press enter, I see the first part is my command, which is slash kill. And the second part is the name of the person. So once we set this up with other commands, like maybe fly, and we can say the name of the person. So let's do Bob. When I press enter, it's going to say the command and the name of the person. Okay, so now that we see how that works, I'm gonna go ahead and delete the print messages. So once we split up that command into the two parts, the type and also the person, we're gonna send that information over to the server side and that's where we're going to execute the command. So to do that, we're gonna say command event colon fire server. We're gonna be sending it the action, which is the first part of the command and the name of the person. After that, we're going to clear out the text box by saying box.text is equal to an empty string. Finally, we want to run this function whenever the enter button gets clicked by saying enter dot mouse button one click colon connect and the name of our function is git underscore command. Okay, so that takes care of everything we need on the local side. The other part of this is going to take place on the server side. So we're going to be adding a script to the server script service. Okay, so on this script, it's a little bit longer, but I broke it into parts that are hopefully pretty easy to understand. Up here at the top, we have the same two lines we wrote in the local script for the replicated storage and also for the remote event. The next part is going to be a list of commands that we're going to be using. Since we're just doing the kill command for now, all I have is slash kill. So to make this, you're just going to say local actions is going to be equal to a curly bracket. And then inside the curly bracket, you're going to write slash kill inside of quotation marks. And then you're going to close it with another curly bracket. To make this look how I did above, you can just start by saying local actions and the equal sign. And then you're going to put your first curly bracket. While your cursor is in between the two curly brackets, you're just going to press enter a few times. And then in the middle here, you can write your command by doing quotation marks, slash, and then kill. Okay, next we have a couple functions that I'll explain in just a second. But I'm going to start with this main function down here. So to make this one, we're going to say local function. The name of the function is going to be do underscore command. And then inside the parentheses, we have some different information that we got from the remote event. So the first one is player. So this is the player that triggered the remote event. The next one is action. And the third one is person. And all this information comes from the local script right here. So we can see action and person. And then the player part of it comes automatically from the remote event. So before we try to run this command, we want to check two different things. We want to make sure that it's a valid action, and we also want to make sure that we have a valid player. So to do that, we're going to make two different functions. So the first one that we're going to make is this one up here, and we're going to say local function. The name of this function is going to be valid underscore command, and we're going to take in the action. So that's the first part of the command. And what we're going to do is we're going to say for underscore comma command in pairs, and then we're going to loop through our action table right up here. And what we're going to do is we're going to check to see if our command is equal to action. If that's true, then we're going to return true. So what this return true does, it's going to make this first part equal to true. But for this to work, we also need a valid player. So that's going to be another function. So this one you can just put directly below valid command. And for this one, it's going to look very similar. We're going to say local function. The name of the function is going to be valid underscore player. This time we're going to take in person. For this part, we're going to say local player is equal to game dot players colon find first child. And then here we're going to be looking for the name of the person. If we find a player, then we're going to return true. Okay, so if it returns true, then this part is also going to be true. And if we have a true and a true, then that means we're good. Okay, so once we have a valid action and a valid player, then we can execute our command. So to do that, we're going to say if action is equal to slash kill, then what we're going to do is we're going to run our third function, which we're going to call kill player. And for this function, we're going to give it the name of the person. So up here is our kill player function. So we're going to say local function, kill underscore player, and we're going to take in the name of the person. We're going to find that player by saying local player is equal to game dot players colon find first child and we're looking for the name of the person. 
And then here we're going to say player dot character dot humanoid dot health, and we're going to set that equal to zero. All right, so let's go ahead and put everything together so I can explain how the whole thing works. All right, so the way this works is the user is going to enter a command into the text box here and then press enter. On the local script, we're going to split up that command into the two different parts, the action and the person. So this would be the action slash kill, and the name would be the person. Once we have those two pieces of information, we're going to send it to the server, which is what this part right here does. And then we're going to clear out the text box by putting this line right here. On the server side, once it sees that the remote event was triggered, it's going to run our main function right here. That main function is going to take in the action and the person that came from the local script. And it's going to do two different things to start with. It's going to make sure that it's a valid command and also a valid player. And we do that by running two different functions at the top. So this one makes sure that we have a valid command by checking to see if it exists in our table right here. And the other one makes sure we have a valid player by looking under game.players. Okay, if we do have a valid command and a valid player, then we're going to go ahead and run our command. So here we're checking to see what action the user wanted. So here, if the action was equal to slash kill, then we're going to run our kill function, which is right here. And that function is going to take the player and set their humanoid's health equal to zero. If for some reason one of these fails, either we don't have a valid command or we don't have a valid player, then it's going to go under this else section right here. And what it's going to do, it's going to enter an error message into the text box. So let me go ahead and run the game, and I can show you what happens if we enter an invalid command. So let's say down here I made a spelling mistake, and I put this instead. When I press enter, it's going to give me an error message that says invalid command, and then I can try it again. All right, and once I entered the correct spelling, then it works. All right, so that's going to be it for now. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave a comment. Also, if you want to suggest any other commands that you want to see, go ahead and leave a comment as well. I hope you enjoyed, and stay tuned for the next one.